Hello and welcome to another Magic the Gathering unboxing. Today I'm going to be looking at the fourth of the five Commander 2014 decks. This is the red deck, the built from scratch deck with Deretti Scrap Savant as the lead general. As with all the other decks, this contains 15 new magic cards. If we flip it over, we get some idea of what we might find in the deck. We can see there's a there's also a Bosch in here. Um, and what I'm thinking about doing actually as a postscript to this series is doing a, a final video after I've finished the unboxings that just highlights some of the the uh, the, the cycles in the deck. Um, maybe looks at some of the the artwork, um, particularly the land artwork. And, and also items in, in all of the decks that repeat themselves, like you know, reoccurring artifacts across all five decks. So the five decks, just to, again to reiterate here, Forged in Stone, Peer Through Time, Sworn to Darkness, Built from Scratch, which is this deck, and Guided by Nature. And they're all monocolor decks, and they all have a Planeswalker as the lead general. Let's open this up, take a look at it. So the other thing to look out for in here is that if it's you know, the same as the other decks, we should see the, the on-colour cycling lands, uh, the on-colour uh, Karoo land and um, a Titan as well. So what I'm going to do first of all is, is look at the actual general in the deck, Commander, and uh, that'll give us a feel for, for maybe where this deck goes in terms of the sort of things it cares about. So Duretti Scrap Savant is three and a red with three loyalty. Planeswalker Duretti. Plus two is discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. So we've got some rummaging going on here. Minus two is sacrifice an artifact. If you do, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So we're looking for cards that care about artifacts here. And it's minus ten ultimate is you get an emblem with Whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of the next end step. So somewhere in here will be uh, one of those emblems as part of those sort of two-sided, um, two-faced tokens that you've seen in the other decks. So let's now get on to the, the deck. And the other the other things in here, as as um, I've mentioned in another video, this is uh, supposedly forms a deck box. There's our um, how to play guide, which we'll have a look at. And uh, the thing I've already shown you before in the previous vid videos is the the rules reference card, which is the same in all the decks. So let's just open this up and get a feel for how the deck should be played. I'm just going to flip over here. It's something I don't always highlight with these decks is that they have a bit of backstory as well in them and a little bit of information because there are two other alternative commanders that you can use with this deck that are included in here. So it mentions that uh, artifacts are our primary tools for victory. Few opponents will be able to keep up with the card draw and artifact recursion this deck can muster in a long game. And Duretti is instrumental in piecing together your powerful interactions. First, his, his first ability lets you sift through your deck to find components of your combinations while, is it, while putting cards into your graveyard that you can return to the battlefield later with other spells. 
and abilities. Doretti's second ability lets you upgrade an unassuming trinket into something truly impressive and his third ability ensures that none of your treasures will stay buried for long. Many of the other cards truly shine when your graveyard is stocked. Felden of the Third Path has an ability that creates a temporary copy of any creature in your graveyard, which works especially well with creatures that have abilities that trigger when they enter the battlefield or when they die. And one thing to remember with this, all this sort of graveyard shenanigans, is we have seen in, in another deck there is a, is a way to um, basically you know, deal with any graveyard stuff. So just be, be careful of that. Like Doretti, uh, so a Goblin Welder like Doretti can cycle artifacts in and out of your graveyard and provide additional value from cars like Ica Wellspring and what oh, one call Engine is in this deck. Excellent. Now this deck can take some time to get going, so you'll want to lay low in the early game. Defensive creatures like Epocrisite and Solemn Simulcrum discourage opponents from attacking you, but won't make you seem like a threat. It's very shiny and difficult to read, this actually. Use the time they bury you to filter through your deck with Doretti and Faithless Looting and to stock up your graveyard. If your opponents insist on trying to attack you, creature sweepers like Starstorm and Insight Rebellion will stop threats dead in their tracks. So that gives you some idea of, of where this deck is going. Okay, so let's just see what our tokens are. So, so far we, we've seen a lot of um, you know the decks we've we've opened so far. There's been definite heavy use of tokens. And we'll see whether it's the same with this. So there's our emblem, and uh, Tuck Tuck the Returned is on the flip side. And there's a mere token there with a pentavite, another mere and pentavite. Mia and Pentavite. And Mia and Pentavite. We've got goblin tokens going on here. Obviously with a red deck, goat, goblin and goat. So there's our worm and another goat, worm, goat, Mia and Pentavite. Okay, so a quick look at our, our artwork on our basic land. I suspect there's probably four different types of art here. Maybe that's something I'll have a look at in the, uh, in the post unboxing video as well. Okay, so first up on the pile here, when we actually get to the deck itself, beyond the basic land, we've got Arcane Lighthouse. Um, and this, this land, you tap it for one colourless to, uh, to your mana pool, add one colourless to your mana pool. And for one colourless you can tap it and until the end of turn, creatures you, your opponents control have Hexproof and Shroud and, and can't have, and can't have, hang on, let me start again on that one. So one colourless, tap it, until the end of turn, creatures your opponents control lose Hexproof and Shroud and can't have Hexproof or Shroud. There's our lead commander, which we've already had a look at. So the other two alternates here, which are in the deck, but obviously can be, uh, can be swapped out if, if you wanted to do that, is Felden of the Third Path. So one and two red for a two, three legendary creature human Artificer. Two and a red, tap, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact. In addition to its other types, it gains haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Now that's interesting because it doesn't look like we've got two alternate red 
generals here, so maybe it's just there's one. I know the other decks have two. Uh, because obviously here, I'm just trying to think what happens with Bosch. Maybe someone can enlighten me, but this is a colourless card. Um, although there is red in the in its ability, so I don't know where that stands um, in terms of the commander rules. My first instinct is that you couldn't play this as a red commander, but I could be completely wrong here, so if I'm, I'm wrong, please correct me. Um, Bosch Iron Golem, it's eight colourless, six, seven legendary artifact creature golem. It's got trample, and for two and a red, sacrifice an artifact. Bosch Iron Golem deals damage equal to the sacrificed artifacts converted mana cost to target creature or player. <coughs> Goblin Welder, one red, one one creature goblin artificer. Tap, choose target artifact a player controls and target artifact card in that player's graveyard. If both targets are still legal, as this ability resolves, that player simultaneously sacrifices the artifact and returns the artifact card to the battlefield. Actually, here's the other legendary red creature. So uh, that, that solves the, the question. Um, so this, this could be used as an alternate commander. Tuck Tuck the Explorer, two and a red, one one haste. When Tuck Tuck the Explorer dies, put a legendary five five colorless go goblin golem Golem artifact creature token name Tuck Tuck the Returned onto the battlefield. Jewel Caster Mage, one and two red for a two two creature human wizard with flash. When Jewel Caster Mage enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Horde Smelter Dragon, four colorless, two red for a five five creature dragon with flying. Three and a red, destroy target artifact. Horde Smelter Dragon gets plus X, plus zero until end of turn, where X is the artifact's converted mana cost. Warmonger Hellkite, four and two red, for a five five creature dragon with flying. All creatures attack each combat if able. One and a red, attacking creature gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Tyrant's Familiar, five and two red, for a five five Flying Haste has a lieutenant on it. As long as you control your commander, Tyrant's Familiar gets plus two, plus two, and has whenever F Tyrant's Familiar attacks, it deals seven damage to target creature defending player controls. Bogard and Hellkite, six and two red for a five five creature dragon with flash and flying. When Bogard and Hellkite enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. Bitter Feud, 4 and a red. Uh, so we're moving on to some enchantments now. As Bitter Feud enters the battlefield, choose 2 players. If a source controlled by one of the chosen players would deal damage to the, chosen, the other chosen player or a permanent that player controls, that source deals damage that source deals double that damage to that player or permanent in instead. Impact Resonance, so we've got some instants now. One and a red, and Impact Resonance deals X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures, where X is the greatest amount of damage dealt by a source to a permanent or player this turn. Chaos Warp, two and a red instant. The owner of target permanent shuffles it into his or her library, then reveals the top card of his or her library. If it's a permanent card, he or she, she puts it onto the battlefield. Volcanic Offering. Four and a red instant. Destroy target non-basic land. You don't control and target non-basic land of an opponent's choice. You don't control. Volcanic Offering deals seven damage to target creature you don't control and seven damage to target creature of an opponent's choice you don't control. Word of Seizing, 3 and 2 red instant, it's got split second on it. So as long as the spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Untap a target permanent and gain control of it until end of turn. It gains haste until end of turn. Magma Quake, X and 2 red instant. Magma Quake deals X damage to each creature without flying and each planeswalker. 
Starstorm, X and 2 red instant. Starstorm deals X damage to each creature. It's got cycling 3 on it as well, so 3 colourless, discard this card, draw a card. Scrap Mastery, 3 and 2 red sorcery. Exile, um, each player exiles all artifact creatures from his or her graveyard, then sacrifices all artifacts he or she controls, then puts all cards he or she exiled this way onto the battlefield. Incite Rebellion, 4 and 2 red sorcery. For each player, Incite Rebellion deals damage to that player and each creature that player controls, equal to the number of creatures he or she controls. Blasphemous Act, 8 and a red sorcery. Blasphemous Act costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Blasphemous Act deals 13 damage to each creature. So now we're moving on to our artifacts. So we should see quite a few here because of the nature of the deck. So we've got Epochrosite, two colourless artifact creature construct. It's a 1-1. One, one. Epochrosite enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it if you didn't cast it from your hand. When a Procrocyte dies, exile it with three time counters on it and it gains Suspend. So at the beginning of your upkeep, remove a time counter. When the last is removed, cast this card without paying its mana cost. It has haste. Junk Diver. Three colourless artifact creature bird. Ooh, it's a 1-1 one, one with flying. When Junk Diver dies, return another artifact creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Solemn Simulcrum, Simulcrum, four colourless for a 2-2 two, two artifact creature golem. When Solemn's, Solemn, Solemn, <laughs> Solemn Simulcrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. When Solemn Simulcrum dies, you may draw a card. Still Hell Kite, six colourless, five five artifact creature dragon, has flying. Two colourless still hail kite deals plus one plus to gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. X colourless destroy each non land permanent with converted mana cost X whose controller was dealt combat damage by still hail guy this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. Worm call engine six colourless six six artifact creature worm with death touch and life link. When Worm Call Engine dies, put a 3 3 colourless worm artifact creature token with death touch and a 3 3 colourless worm artifact creature token with lifelink onto the battlefield. Mere Battlesphere. 7 colourless 4 7 artifact creature mere construct. When Mere Battlesphere enters the battlefield, put 4 1 1 colourless mere artifact creature tokens onto the battlefield. Whenever Mere Battlefield attacks, you may tap X, untap Mere. You control. If you do, Mere Battlesphere gets plus X plus zero until end of turn and deals X damage to defending player. Pentavus, seven colorless, zero, zero. Pentavus enters the battlefield with five plus one plus one counters on it. One colorless, remove a plus one plus one counter from Pentavus, put a one one colorless Pentavite artifact creature token with flying onto the battlefield. A one colourless sacrifice of Pentavite, put a plus one plus one counter on Pentavus. Ruby Metallion, two colourless, and with this red spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's an artifact, and there's a cycle of these in, in the decks. Jalem Tome, three colourless. Um, for two colourless, tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. So we've got more artifacts here. Trading post for colourless. One colourless, tap it, discard a card, you gain four life. One colourless, tap it, pay one life, put a zero one white goat creature token onto the battlefield. We saw those tokens earlier. One colourless, tap, sacrifice a creature, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. And one colourless, sacrifice an artifact, draw a card. So all of those abilities interact with one another over time. Cage Sun, six colourless artifact. As Cage Sun enters the battlefield, choose a colour. Creatures you control of the chosen colour get plus one plus one. Whenever a land's ability adds one or more mana of the chosen colour to your mana pool, add one additional mana of that colour to your mana pool. Spine of Ishsar, seven colourless. 
Artifact when Spinovish signs the battlefield destroy target permanent. When Spinovish Shah is put onto the, into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spinovish Shah to its owner's hand. So now we've got some uh, non non basic lands. Flamekin Village. As Flamekin Village enters the battlefield, you may reveal an elemental card from your hand. If you don't, Flamekin Flamekin Village enters the battlefield tapped. Tap. Add red to your mana pool. Red and tap, tap, target creature gains haste until end of turn. Buried Ruin is also a land. Tap, add one colourless to your mana pool. Two colourless tap, sacrifice Buried Ruin. Return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Dark Steel Citadel is an artifact land with indestructible on it. So effects that say destroy, don't destroy this land. Tap it, add one colourless to your mana pool. Dormant Volcano. Dormant Volcano enters the battlefield tap. When Dormant Volcano enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless you return an untapped mountain you control to its owner's hand. Tap, add one red, one and a red to your mana pool. So this is part of the cycle we've seen in the other decks. Forgotten Cave. Forgotten Cave enters the battlefield tap. Tap, add red to your mana pool. And there's a cycling of red as well. And we've seen the well, and part of that whole cycle of lands in the other deck. Ghost Quarter, so far this has been in all the other decks. Uh, tap, add one colour to your mana pool. Sacrifice Ghost Quarter, destroy target land. Its controller may search his or her library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, then shuffle his or her library. Great Furnace is an artifact land, so no surprise to see th this in the deck. Tap, add red to your mana pool. Phyrexia's Core, tap, add one to your mana pool, one taps, a sacrifice, an artifact, you gain one life. Reliquary Tower, you have no minimum, no maximum hand size, tap, add one colourless to your mana pool. Smouldering Crater, not the cycling land here, Smouldering Crater enters the battlefield, tap, tap, add red to your mana pool, it's got cycling of two colourless. Temple of the False God, tap it, add two Colourless to your mana pool. Activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. So moving on to some more creatures. Flame Tongue Kavu. Uh, creature Kavu Kavu. 4-2. When Flame Tongue Kavu enters the battlefield, it deals four damage to target creature. And it's three and a red. Beetleback Chief, two and two red, two two creature goblin warrior. When Beetleback Chief enters the battlefield, Put two one one red goblin creature tokens onto the battlefield. Ingot Chewer. Four and a red, three three creature elemental. When Ingot Chewer enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. It's got invoke cost of red. So you can cast this spell for its evoke cost. If you do, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield. That way all that triggers is the enter the battlefield effect, which is when Ingot Chewer enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. Spike Bellows, 5 and a red, 6-1 creature elemental. When Spike Bellows leaves the battlefield, it deals 6 damage to target creature. There's an evoke cost on this one as well. 1 and 2 red, you may cast this spell for its evoke cost. If you do, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield. So same as the other one. So that will trigger its enter the battlefield effect only. Faithless Looting, 1 red. Draw 2 cards, then discard, discard 2 cards. So we've got some rummaging going on here. Flashback to an a red. You may cast this card from your graveyard for its flashback cost, then exile it. Whip Flare, one and a red. Whip Flare deals two damage to each non-artifact creature. Mirror Retriever, two colorless, one one artifact creature Mirror. When Mirror Retriever dies, return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So it looks like we're gonna get a few Mirrors in here as well. Mirror Sire, two colorless. So 1-1 one, one artifact creature Mirror. When Mirror's side dies, put a 1-1 one, one colourless Mirror artifact creature token onto the battlefield. Bottle Gnomes, 3 colourless, 1-3. Sacrifice Bottle Gnomes, you gain 3 life. Cathodion, which is an artifact creature cons construct, costs 3 to cast, it's a 3-3. Three, three. When Cathodion dies, add 3 colourless to your mana pool. Palladium Mirror, Palladium. Three colourless, two two artifact creature Mia. Tap, add two colours to your mana pool. Pilgrim's Eye, three colourless, one one artifact creature Thopter. 
stop flying. When Pilgrim's Eye enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. Ever Flying Chalice is in the deck. Zero to cast. It's got a multi kicker of two on it, so with multi kicker, you can pay the additional two, but you can pay it any number of times you cast the spell. Ever Flowing Chalice enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it for each time it was kicked. And what you can do is you can tap this, add one colour to your mana pool for each charge counter on Ever Flowing Chalice. Panic Spell Bomb. One colourless sacrifice panic. So you tap it, sacrifice panic spell bomb. Target creature can't block this turn. And when panic spell bomb is put into the a graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay red if you do draw a card. Soul Ring is in, in all the decks. One colourless artifact tap to add two colourless to your mana pool. Wayfarer's Bauble, one colourless cost of two tap the this this particular artifact, sacrifice Wayfarer's Bauble, search your library for a basic land card, put and put that card onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. Fire Diamond, two colourless, Fire Diamond into the battlefield, tapped. Tap, add red to your mana pool. So there's a, a cycle of these as well in the decks. Icus Wellspring, two colourless, when Icus Wellspring into the battlefield, or it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, draw a card. Liquid, liquid Metal Coating, two colourless, target permanent becomes an artefact in addition to its other types until end of turn, so very useful in an artefact heavy deck. Mind Stone, two colourless, tap, add one to your mana pool. One tap, sacrifice Mindstone, draw a card. I think this has been in all the other decks. Uh, Microsynth Wellspring, two colourless. When my Microsynth synth Wellspring into the battlefield was put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in, into your hand, then shuffle your library. Swiftfoot Boots, this has definitely been in all the other decks. Two colourless, equipped creature, has hexproof and haste, equipped for one. Commander's Sphere, another one that appears in all the decks. Three colourless, tap, add to your mana pool, one mana of any colour in your commander's colour identity. Sacrifice Commander's Sphere, draw a card. Pristine Talisman, three colourless, tap, add one colour to your mana pool, you gain one life. And, oh, a couple more cards here, a few more cards. Unstable Obelisk, three colourless, tap, add one colour to your mana pool. Seven colourless, tap, sacrifice Unstable Obelisk, destroy a target permanent. Dreamstone Hedron, six colourless, tap, add three to your mana pool. Three colours, tap, sacrifice Dreamstone Hedron, draw three cards. And the final card we have is Law Seeker's Stone. So for six colourless, it gives us an artifact which for three colours we can tap, draw three cards. This ability costs one more to activate for each card in your hand. So that's the whole of the built from scratch deck, which as you've seen is uh, very artifact heavy. Our lead commander is uh, Duretti Scrap Servant. As with the other decks, you also get a number of uh, double, double faced tokens there to use. So there you have it. That's the, the built from scratch Commander 2014 deck. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.